Hello, my name is Laurie Hillman, and I am the vocal music director and an elementary music specialist for Cheyenne Public Schools in Cheyenne, Oklahoma. In this presentation, I will share with you some of the important components found in my problem of practice conducted as a doctoral candidate at Baylor University in Waco, Texas. It is entitled Music and Mathematics, a Reciprocal Relationship, Action Research with Third Graders from Cheyenne Elementary School in Cheyenne, Oklahoma. A quick overview of the content shows that I will discuss my problem and purpose statements, literature review highlights, methodology, research questions, an overview of findings, implications of the study, and a distribution plan. During my time as an educator in various capacities at Cheyenne Public Schools, I found that in three of the last seven years, Cheyenne third graders scored lower in mathematics than in reading on the Oklahoma core curriculum test, specifically in the areas of geometry and measurement. The problem, therefore, investigated in this research is how to improve students' depth of knowledge and knowledge retention in geometry and measurement through music instruction. I began developing a curriculum, also called Music and Mathematics, a Reciprocal Relationship. This led me to the development of my purpose statement that says, the purpose of this study is to bring to light practical ways music educators can assist their colleagues and students in learning concepts that are tied to two Oklahoma math standards, geometry and measurement, while also teaching musical concepts and objectives. When reviewing literature pertaining to music's effect upon the brain's plasticity, Two key studies to consider include those by Mateo Aparicio and Rodriguez Morenas in 2019, and another by Herholtz and Zatore in 2012. They state that plasticity, which is found in the corpus callosum, is the ability of the nervous system to change its activity in response to intrinsic or extrinsic stimuli by reorganizing its structure, functions, or connections. Furthermore, their studies ascertain that intense training in music beginning in early childhood shows brain plasticity as having a denser and larger effect than that of one without vigorous instruction and practice. Studies concerning the relationship between music and knowledge retention are plentiful. Riata 2016 suggests the effects that music has on the brain are beyond mood, showing an increase in one's cognitive abilities. Yoho 2011 and Mayor 2018 submit that students' comprehension of mathematical skills gain depth when combined with musical instruction. Then, when discussing the connection between music and higher order thinking skills, compelling studies such as those performed by Baumberger 2000, Johnson 2004, and Topuglo 2014 advocate that the skills learned through intense music instruction, participation, and performances increase problem-solving skills, critical listening skills, as well as skills found in social and emotional awareness. Finally, the effects of music on academic success have been studied by people like Johnson and Mamat in 2006 and Muse in 2014, who found that participation in music study shows positive effects on student academic success on mandated exams beginning as early as third grade through the culminating SAT exams for 12th graders. The more a student engaged in music programs, the more positive the correlation between music and the indicators became. Well, my literature view is much more expansive than what I'm able to share with you in this presentation. However, findings in multiple studies in all of the areas presented here helped me decide on my chosen methodology of action research, utilizing the teaching for understanding theoretical framework. The teaching for understanding framework begins with generative topics. These are topics that are central to one or more disciplines. They engage learners and instructors. They're readily available to our learners. They provide multiple avenues for connections across content. Once generative topics are established, understanding goals can be formed. These are the statements or the questions indicating the objectives to be explored and mastered. 
After understanding goals are formed, learners are encouraged to develop their own performances of understanding. These also address the understanding goals, the statements and the questions that cover the objectives to be explored and mastered. Throughout the process, there are ongoing assessments, both formative and summative. And at any point in the cyclical process of the framework, you can go back and forth between any of the phases. The cyclical nature of the Teaching for Understanding framework lends itself well to the action research design. In action research design, there are six steps. First, identify the issue to explore. Second, attempt different ways to resolve the issue. Third, collect, analyze, and interpret data throughout the study. Fourth, reflect on your findings. Fifth, explore new findings with others involved in the study. And sixth, based on reflections, investigate other actions that may or may not lead to resolution or improvement in the issue. Action research is conducted by teachers or other school-related personnel who seek to study their own and their school's practices as suggested by Efron and Ravi 2020. Therefore, action research was perfect for what I wanted to do because I wanted to study what I was doing in my music classroom and how it could help our students learn other things that they found in their academic classroom. So Cheyenne Elementary provides instruction for students in pre-K through eighth grade. On this campus, we have approximately 240 students, and that student population consists of 74.8% who are Caucasian, 14.6% st students are Hispanic, and 10.6% of the students are two or more races. It should also be noted that pre-K through sixth grade attend music class daily. All third graders at Cheyenne Elementary participated in the MMRR curriculum implementation. I collected consent and assent forms from the students, their parents, their classroom teacher, as well as the administration. After that was complete, a random number generator from calculator.net was utilized and it designated the five students who took part in the semi-structured interviews and work sample collection for the remainder of the study's data collection phases. And of course, I utilized pseudonyms throughout the reporting process. This is a representation of the phases that I used in the data collection and analysis of that data. The first phase was a collection of data from their first BAF benchmark assessment. This was conducted in early March, and it helped me determine the two lowest objectives, which had then been further narrowed to attributes of 3D shapes for geometry and elapsed time for measurement. Following that data collection, I conducted my first set of interviews in which the students explained to me their ideal learning environments, whether they like to work alone or with partners or in groups. Taking ideas from those interviews, I began implementing MMRR curriculum in the music room. I conducted observations. I collected student work samples for the attributes of 3D shapes. Some of those work samples included a slide presentation created by two participants with pictures of musical objects found in our music room that displayed attributes of 3D shapes. Another participant decided to write a song about the characteristics of 3D shapes. So after that, the students were given a time for reflection and then I conducted my second set of interviews in which I asked them about their experiences with the curriculum and if they were able to transfer knowledge that they gained in the music room to what they were learning in their classroom. After those interviews were completed, I moved on to implementing the second unit of instruction for elapsed time. I did observations again. I collected more student work samples and some of those work samples collected in the second unit included the development of a 20-minute patriotic program in which the pair of participants determined the length of each song, along with allowing time for speaking opportunities throughout the presentation. Another work sample allowed the learner to demonstrate through multiplication how he determined the time it would take to perform a song three times when given the time signature and the metronome marking. And again, students were given the opportunity to reflect on their experiences. 
I did one more set of math benchmarks and collected the data from it. One more set of concluding interviews in which they described to me their experiences, again, whether or not they were able to transfer what they learned in the music room to what they had learned in the academic room. The last phase of data collection and analysis included interpretation of all of the results and reflection on my own part for future planning in MMR curriculum development and implementation. All of that, the teaching for understanding framework and the action research design helped me develop two research questions. How does a music curriculum tied to two Oklahoma academic standards for third grade mathematics impact students' academic performance in mathematics? And what are the experiences of third graders in relation to MMRR's curriculum implementation? What you see here are the benchmark results from the first exam that was given in early March for the five participants. Elizabeth scored a 59% on 3D shape attributes, 65% on elapsed time. Brian, 23% on 3D shape attributes and 33% on elapsed time. Joseph scored 37% on 3D shape attributes and 51% on elapsed time. Where James scored 42% on 3D shape attributes and 55% on elapsed time. Melissa scored 39% on 3D shape attributes and 51% on elapsed time. So a broad overview of the findings from the study. In the area of attributes of 3D shapes, I saw a 5% increase in the scores for the whole class on their last benchmark and an 8% increase for the five participants on the last benchmark. In the area of elapsed time, we saw a 5.7% increase for the whole class and a 21% increase for the five participants. Now, in no way am I saying that this increase that we showed for the whole class and for the participants was due to the implementation of the MMR curriculum. We all know that students learn best when they are given instruction in multiple ways, in multiple settings for the same content. Through the interviews, I found that the participants all expressed their enjoyment of the activities provided through the MMRR's curriculum. However, not all of them demonstrated the transfer of skills from the music classroom setting to the mathematics setting. So the implications, now what? We need to view music as a discipline through a new lens because learners academic success has the potential to increase as music educators provide blended instruction such as that found in music and math, the reciprocal relationship. Schools need to support the use of music instruction to enhance the material students learn in the academic room. And finally, music educators should seek and utilize resources such as those found in MMRR curriculum to blend academic and music content consistently and in more depth than merely singing songs about colors, letters, and shapes. The distribution plan that I have in mind contains a condensed presentation to Cheyenne Public Schools Board of Education and Administration. I would also like to do a professional presentation to the key stakeholders, including administration, teachers, staff, as well as participants and their parents or guardians. And a major goal of mine is to do a professional presentation to Oklahoma music educators at their annual winter conference in January of 2023. Here are many of the references that I used within this presentation. And I'd like to take this time to say thank you very much for allowing me to share my research. I look forward to questions and comments from my defense committee. Thank you again.